in the last class we discussed about the different biasing schemes used for amplifiers and we have studied about the significance of proper biasing scheme so that a weak signal given as input can be faithfully amplified without any distortion occurring at any portion of the signal. So now today we will be discussing about the amplifier which is used for such amplification of weak signal with different biasing schemes and today we will be starting with discussing a BJT amplifier in the common emitter configuration. So the common emitter BJT amplifier with fixed biasing scheme will be discussed first. So the fixed biasing scheme as we have studied earlier is having a biasing resistance given here by this RB. This resistance is connected to base terminal and it shares the same VCC with the collector which is used for reverse biasing. We are taking for an example an NPN transistor which is common emitter configuration. So here apart from this biasing resistances there are capacitances which are used for coupling the signals. So the C1 is the input coupling capacitor which is coupling the signal Vs and the output which is obtained at the output terminals this output is V0 and this output is obtained by coupling the collector with a capacitor C2. And this Vs which is the input signal this is having a series resistance Rs and we are getting the output voltage V0 across this load resistance RL. So this amplifier has the source resistance Rs in series with the source Vs and it has a load resistance RL and we are getting the output voltage across this load resistance. And Rb is the resistance which is connected in the base for biasing as well as Rc is the resistance at the collector. So this scheme is a simple biasing scheme which is known as fixed bias scheme. So now in order to know how this amplification is taking place by considering the AC equivalent circuit we can proceed now to find out the different parameters which are involved in this amplifier like we can find out the voltage gain that is the ratio by which the output voltage is increased with respect to the input voltage Vi or with respect to the source Vs. As well we can find out the current gain the, in, the ratio between the output and input currents also we can find out the input impedance, output impedance etc. But before that we must draw the AC equivalent circuit for this amplifier including the transistor model which we discussed earlier that is RE model we will be discussing here that is we will be taking the RE model for replacing the transistor. So first of all if we draw this AC equivalent circuit following the procedures which we discussed earlier we can draw the AC equivalent circuit by first making the DC source as 0 that is short circuiting the DC source then we will be assuming short circuit part for the AC input as far as the capacitors are concerned because the capacitors are chosen high values so that under the signal which is being applied the capacitors offer almost 0 impedance or capacitive reactance such that it is like short circuit. Following these procedures if we try to draw the AC equivalent circuit for this fixed bias transistor amplifier we will make the VCC 0 here it is only having the DC source VCC shared by this RB and RC. So this source will have to be made 0 first that is we will be grounding this VCC and after grounding this VCC we are left with the RB and RC resistances being grounded as far as this figure here RB and RC these two resistances are connected to ground and then we will be considering the capacitances C1 and C2 and make them short circuit 
because we are drawing the AC equivalent circuit and as these capacitors are having large values, so it is almost equivalent to being short circuiting as far as AC is concerned. So, this part involving C1 and C2 will be short circuit as far as this signal is concerned. So, short circuiting means we will be simply removing this capacitors by short circuit part. So, as far as this base terminal is concerned, it will be having a RV which is grounded as well as it will be connected to Vs the signal at the input through this resistance Rs. And this coupling capacitor will also be now removed and it will be a short circuit part from collector through this load resistance to ground and another part will be there from the collector which is through this resistance RC to ground because VCC is now grounded and emitter is already grounded. So, the whole circuit as per AC equivalent is concerned, it will be having these base collector emitter terminals as coming from the transistor. From the base terminal, this RB is connected to ground and another part will be to this Vs through this RS. So, collector will also be having this RC to ground and RL is the load resistance connected at the collector to ground, it will be there. And now, as far as this transistor is considered, and we have already discussed how to draw this equivalent RE model that is emitter resistance model for this transistor. So, we will be replacing simply the equivalent transistor model for the common emitter transistor. So, this base collector emitter this is the transistor basically. So, you have you see here the base an emitter is having the resistance beta plus 1 RE and collector is having a dependent current source beta times of IV which is equal to IC. So, this part is replaced by this transistor model and incorporating this transistor model into the whole circuit, we are getting this AC equivalent circuit for the amplifier. Now, we want to find out the voltage gain. For example, if we try to find out the voltage gain, we will be finding out the ratio between the output voltage and the input voltage. Now, we have to see which are the input terminals and output terminals, always we will see from the source to find out the input terminals and we will look from this load to consider the output terminals. That means, the whole amplifier will be having the source and load external to it. So, as if we are sitting at the source and looking into the amplifier, in that way we will have to find out the parameters. Similarly, as far as the output is concerned, we will be looking from that load as if we are sitting on the load and looking into the amplifier. So, this point is important because we will have to exclude the source and load while finding out the parameters in the whole amplifier. So, in between these two dashed lines is the whole amplifier and the source and the load are external to it. So, now if we want to find out what is the voltage gain that is the gain means the amplification between the output voltage and input voltage. So, the output voltage is between these two points that is the voltage across this load resistance and input voltage is between these two points. V i is this input voltage and V naught is the output voltage and conventionally this input and output currents if we consider they are into the amplifier. Customarily it is shown as direction as in into the amplifier. So, I o i that is the input current which is coming from the source it will be flowing into the amplifier at this input terminal. So, this is the input current and output current at this output terminals into the amplifier. So, the I naught current is flowing through this resistance RL into the amplifier and input current is coming from the source into the amplifier. Now, if we look into this input current, we notice that the input current is having two parts. One part is through this resistance RB and the other part of the current is through this resistance beta plus 1 RE. So, this input current basically has two parts, one is through this, one is through this. And the current source at the output if we consider, IC is the current source which is equal to beta times of IB and so the current which will be flowing, it will be flowing in this direction, it will be going to the output side, input current, base current will be coming and it will be flowing like this. So, here the beta times of IB current which is the collector current has actually three parts, one is through this RC, one is through this R naught, R naught is the output resistance of the transistor. So, this very very conveniently we generally ignore because it is having a very high value in the order of mag ohms, but to be exact this should be there and afterwards we can ignore it if uh, we are told that it is very very large you can ignore it but for the time being while drawing the exact circuit equivalent circuit we will be having this r naught at the 
output side. This R0 is that output resistance of the transistor, common emitter transistor and that is generally having very high value. So, this uh, current collector current beta times of IV has three parts, one is through this RC, one is through this R0 and the other is through this RL which is nothing but the conventional output current I0 as it is shown here. Now, if we want to find out input impedance, ZI is denoting the input impedance, we have to take the input terminals, find out the voltage at this input terminals is VI divided by the current II, input voltage by input current will be the input impedance. And output impedance, we will be looking into the output terminals from the load and we will be finding out what is the output impedance by taking the ratio between V0 and I0, that is V0 by I0 making the input source 0, that is V as you make 0, that will make V i 0 means I B will be 0, so I C will be 0, so we will be left with these two resistances being in parallel at the output side, so that will be constituting the output resistance. So, these parameters we are going to find out, but first of all one thing is to notice that while finding out these parameters, we will be excluding this source and load from this amplifier, that means we will be looking from the source to the input side or we will be looking from the load to the output side while finding out this parameters. So, one by one we will be finding out these parameters from this equivalent circuit. So, if we want to find out what is the input impedance ZI. So, input impedance means the ratio between VI and II. So, ZI is equal to VI by II. Now, we can find out what is VI, input voltage if we look into this figure, input voltage between these two terminals or two points, the voltage across this resistance beta plus 1 Re or the voltage across Rv that is the input voltage. So, we can find out in two ways, that is the current which is flowing through Rb multiplied by Rb that is the VI or current Ib multiplied by this resistance beta plus 1 Re that is the input voltage. So, we will be following the latter that is we will be following the input voltage expression that is I B into beta plus 1 into R E and the denominator is I I. Now, our purpose is to eliminate those active components like we will be eliminating or cancelling out the currents and we will be left with only the passive elements. So, that is why uh, this I B if we want to express again in terms of I I in order to cancel them out, if we look back into the circuit and find out what is the base current. So, base current is that part of the current which is flowing through this resistance coming from I I. Input current is I I, one part goes through this resistance R B and the other part is through this resistance beta plus 1 R E. So, now we are interested in finding out I B. So, what is I B? I B is equal to these two parallel parts are there. So, current division is taking place. So, I I into R B divided by R B plus beta plus 1 R E that gives us the value of I B. So, expressing that I B in that way, I B is equal to I I into R B by R B plus beta plus 1 into R E and the remaining terms are there beta plus 1 into R E divided by I I. Now, we can very well cancel I I and I I. So, we are left with R B into beta plus 1 R E divided by R B plus beta plus 1 R E. So, this is the exact expression for the input impedance for this amplifier in the fixed bias mode and here we find that all these parameters are passive parameters means they are either resistance or they are either uh, they are current gain beta and this Re in fact we will have to find out this small r small e that is the resistance coming from the transistor model and we can find it out in this particular example it will if we want to find Re we can find out because R E is nothing but 26 millivolt divided by emitter current capital I capital E. Now, once we know I E from the DC equivalent circuit, we can plug in the value here and find out this small r small e. That exercise has to be done in order to proceed further. So, in fact, in order to find out all these parameters, we have to consider both the DC equivalent circuit and AC equivalent circuit. DC equivalent circuit we have to consider because we want to find out what is small r e. So, after we find out small r e we can plug in here and we can find out the other parameters. So, input impedance we have found out and here z i can be expressed as a parallel combination between the two resistances r b and beta plus 1 r e. That is exactly what is happening because if we look into this expression 
R B into beta plus one R E by R B plus beta plus one. It is nothing but the parallel combination of these two resistances, R B and beta plus one R E. And in fact, this is very very obvious. If we look into the circuit from the input terminals, then there are two resistances at the input. One is R B and one is beta plus one R E. Both are in parallel. So intuitively also we can see that this is the equivalent parallel resistance between these two resistances which are in parallel. So, that is what exactly we are finding out here the parallel impedance between these two resistances that is R B parallel beta plus 1 R E. So, this is the input impedance. Now, if we look into the output circuit and find out what is the output impedance here we have to find out looking from this load. So, output impedance can be found out if we make this input voltage 0 because we, we are interested only that uh, quantities in the output side. So, input side components or input side currents or voltages must not interfere with this output side that is why if we make this V i 0 then I b will be 0. So, I c will be 0. So, this is like open circuit this part will not be there. So, only we will be left with two parallel resistances R c and R naught because our circuit will be like this this part will be I b is 0. So, I c is equal to 0 and there are these two resistances one is R c and one is R naught small R naught that will be there at the output side and we are finding out this output impedance. So, this output impedance is the parallel impedance R c and R naught. So, output impedance is R c parallel R naught making this input V i is equal to 0 that is the procedure to be followed in order to find out what is output impedance. Now, at this point I want to mention that if R naught is considered to be very very large which is actually the case its order is in the order of magom 10 to the power 6. So, as compared to R c it is higher. So, we can neglect this resistance or we can ignore this resistance because it is very high it is almost like infinity if it is very high or infinite infinite what it happens is that there will practically be no current in this part because infinite impedance it is offering. So, it will not be current will not follow this part that means it is like open circuit R naught will be simply ignored then we are left with only R c. So, then we can say that R c is the output resistance this is the case when you ignore R naught R naught means the output resistance of the transistor. So, these two parameters Z i and Z naught we have found out now what about the voltage gain the voltage gain is the ratio between the output voltage and input voltage that means it is a ratio between V naught and V i V naught and V i if we look back what is V naught here this V naught is nothing but I naught into R L but with a minus sign because we have denoted V naught as upper point is positive with respect to the ground, but this I naught is following in this direction this is I naught. So, I naught is this current. So, it is flowing from a higher potential to lower potential as far as this sign is concerned. So, the voltage drop if we consider it as V naught it will be I naught into R L with a minus sign. So, minus I naught R L will be equal to V naught because as far as direction of current this is positive point this is negative point, but voltage we have denoted as V naught as upper point is positive. So, V naught is equal to minus I naught into R L and input voltage we know that we have already found out input voltage I B into beta plus 1 R E. So, replacing this values here V naught is equal to minus I naught into R L and V I is equal to I B into beta plus 1 R E. Now, again if we replace what is the I naught. Now, if we look back into the circuit what is I naught? I naught is that part of current of I c which is flowing through this resistance R l because if we look into this output side the current source is beta times I b which is equal to I c. This current is flowing in this output side and this current has three parts as I have just now mentioned it is one part of the current beta times I b is flowing through R c other part is R through R naught other part is through R l and we are interested in finding out that part I naught. So, if we combine these two R c and R naught together as R c parallel R naught that is one resistance say other is R l. Now, according to current division beta terms of I b is divided into this parallel resistance and this resistance. So, we are interested in finding out this current through this resistance R l. So, that will be equal to beta times I b into this equivalent parallel combination R c parallel R l divided by R c parallel R l plus R l capital R c parallel R naught plus R l. So, that is here written beta times of I b 
minus sign is there because minus i not rl is the voltage out at the output here we are replacing this i not by beta times i b into r c parallel r not by r c parallel r not plus r l into r l r l is already there in the original expression and v i input voltage is given by i v into beta plus 1 into r e. So, now we can further simplify this expression by writing minus beta into i b i b cancel. So, upper term or the numerator term if we again consider it is nothing but parallel combination between these three resistances r c small r naught and capital R capital L because this is r c parallel r naught into R L divided by R C parallel R not plus R L. This is the parallel combination between this and this. So, finally, we have a parallel combination between all this three in the numerator divided by beta plus 1 into R E. Now, as beta and beta plus 1 are almost equal because beta is a high value, suppose 100 and 101, there is not much difference, it is almost equal. So, we can very conveniently cancel them out. Then it gives a further simplified expression and that is equal to minus R c parallel R naught parallel R l by R e. And here again, if we now consider that R naught is very high, then we can further ignore R naught and finally, we get an expression if R naught is ignored, then we will be further getting another further simplified expression of A v which is equal to minus R c parallel R naught R l divided by R small r e. This is a very, very simple expression to even remember because now we have ignored R naught because it is very high. But this is the exact expression and uh, further simplifications can be done conveniently looking into the practical aspects. Now, one thing to be noted is here the minus sign. Actually, this minus sign has a significance or it has a meaning because minus sign means the phase reversal of 180 degree or the output voltage is out of phase by 180 degree with the input. So, that is actually denoted by this minus sign. 180 degree phase shift occurs between the input and output signals that is why V naught by V i is having a minus. So, if I have input voltage like this, I will be getting an output voltage which will be amplified no doubt, but it is out of phase by 180 degree like this. So, we will be getting a 180 degree phase difference between the input and output and that is denoted by this minus sign. Now, if we want to find out another term which is current gain, current gain is the ratio between the output current I naught and input current I i. Now, output current as we have just now done can be expressed as beta times of I b into R c parallel R l by R c parallel R l plus R l divided by I i. Again, this I b can be further written as beta uh, uh, if we, if I consider I B from this from the equivalent circuit, we, it is better to look into the equivalent circuit to find out what is I B, I I into R B by R B plus beta plus one into R E. That also we have done earlier. So just writing in that way, that's what is done here. I I into R B by R B plus beta plus one into R E. That is the value of I B, and the rest of the part is as it is divided by I I. So now I can cancel out this I I and I I. So, now we are left with I i is equal to beta times of R b by R b plus beta plus 1 R e into R c parallel R naught by R c parallel R naught plus R l. So, mind it here we cannot make a parallel combination because the numerator does not have this R l term. So, as it is we have to write only further simplifications can be done only if we consider that here in this term we can look into that beta plus 1 R e, R e is small. So, if we write down that uh, R b plus beta plus 1 R e equivalently or approximately, then only we can do further simplification, but uh, let us not do and keep it in exactly in the same way. Now, of course, one thing we can do is R naught is ignored. If R naught is ignored, then we will be left with beta into R b by R b plus beta plus 1 R e into R c by R c plus R l. That much simplification we can do. And here one thing to be noticed is that there is no phase shift between the output and input currents. If output current is towards the transistor, input current will also be towards the transistor. There is no sign change, so there is no phase reversal. So, the current gain does not have any phase shift, only the voltage has. But one more thing I would like to find out here is the voltage gain with respect to the source. If we look into the voltage gain, what we have just now found out, it is V naught by V i. 
that means with respect to the input voltage we are finding out the ratio by which the output voltage is increased the input voltage means this voltage but again if we look into what is v i with respect to v s because one part of this input signal which you are giving as input a part is lost in the resistance r s because there is a drop in the resistance r s and the rest is what is available as v i. So, if we want to find out the voltage gain with respect to the source and term it as a v s denoting the voltage gain with respect to the source then we we have to write it v naught by v s and that can be further expressed by a chain which is v naught into v i into v i in by v s because v naught by v i we have already found out we can write it as a v but what about v i by v s because we have seen that the signal v s which you are applying at the input there is a resistance at, at which there is a drop rest part is available as v i. So, this voltage we want to express it in terms of v s. So, what will we do that voltage because this input side is having a input impedance z i which we have already found out. So, we can find out voltage division because voltage division is taking place here. So, what is v i? V s into z i by z i plus r s this this is the voltage available at input that is what is written here v s into z i by z i plus r s and z i we, we have found out that is equal to that r b parallel beta plus 1 r e that is z i that we have just now found out that is r b parallel beta plus 1 r e. So, putting the value of z i we can find out now the expression for v i by v s that is equal to z i by z i plus r s. So, what is a v s is equal to a v this part is a v into v i by v s is nothing but z i by z i plus r s. So, this is the voltage gain with respect to the source we are finding out two things one is with respect to the input voltage one is with respect to the source. So, this was about the fixed bias configuration. Now, let us go to another configuration which is having a resistance at the emitter that is self bias is there, but with a bypass capacitor. If we consider this figure this is an self bias in the emitter is there that is the difference between the fixed bias and this bias which is the which is called the emitter bias configuration, but there is a bypass capacitor. Now, if we look into this circuit and compare with the earlier one there is no difference as far as the AC equivalent is concerned because as there is a bypass capacitor and it is like short circuit in AC. So, the emitter resistance R will be bypassed by the current emitter current. So, it is nothing but the same circuit which is just now analyzed because the equivalent will be like this only because the emitter is bypassed it will be directed to the ground not by this uh, not through this resistance in the emitter R e, but it will be having a short circuit path and the others are exactly same. So, this resist this circuit and the earlier fixed bias circuit does not have any difference as far as AC equivalent is concerned. So, we need not analyze it again and similar analysis as the earlier are still holding for this circuit that is this amplifier with self bias in the emitter with a bypass capacitor. But if the bypass capacitor is not present in the emitter then of course, the circuit will be different and that what that is what we are going to do that is common emitter emitter bias configuration without the emitter bypass capacitor if we consider bypass capacitor is not there mind it and that is why there is the existence of this R, R e that is the emitter resistance in the emitter path. So, if we want to draw the equivalent circuit for this amplifier following the usual procedure that we have followed earlier we will be getting a circuit like this following all the necessary procedure it will be having this this is the transistor side equivalent model for the transistor for a common emitter and the input is having this R b as well as the source and resistance R s which is the series resistance with the source and the output is R l the load resistance R c R e is there, but here one thing is missing is that R naught we are ignoring and R naught is conveniently ignored here because inclusion of this R naught will further complicate the whole analysis. So, for very very conveniently we can ignore R naught that is what is done here R naught is ignored 
otherwise it will be very complex circuit to analysis and in order to avoid the, all those complications we can very well ignore R0 as it is practically also true. So, excluding that R0 we are having this circuit at the output side only RC will be there RL of course is there which is the load resistance and RE is there which is in the emitter the current flowing through this emitter resistance RE if we look it is the emitter current IE that is equal to beta plus 1 into IB. So, this resistance RE can be very well written as the reflected resistance beta plus 1 RE. Instead of RE we can write beta plus 1 RE in the emitter resistance and we can keep this IB same that is same current IB is flowing having a resistance here beta plus 1 RE that is conveniently done because then our analysis will also be easier and we are not doing anything wrong because the voltage drop if you consider the voltage drop is IB into beta plus 1 RE plus IE into RE, but IE is again nothing but beta plus 1 IB. So, the voltage drop is same only thing we are writing it differently that is instead of RE we can write beta plus 1 RE and the current IB is same other current is beta times IB of course, this should be having a symbol of a diamond because this is the symbol for the dependent current source it is not the circle circle is independent current source. So, this is wrong in order to write it correctly we should have a diagonal signal which is the symbol for a dependent current source because it is a dependent current source dependent on IC is dependent on IB. So, now in this circuit all the parameters which we have just now found out for the other circuit are to be found out. So, for that starting with input impedance now input impedance if I consider V i by I i is the input impedance looking from the this source into the input that is the input impedance. Now, input impedance is basically parallel impedance between R b and this whole resistance. Now, this whole resistance is this resistance plus this resistance let us name it as Z b for, for clear understanding I am denoting it separately Z b is equal to V i by I b that is this voltage by the current I b. So, as just now we have expressed it as beta plus 1 into R e keeping the I b same. So, what is this resistance? This resistance is nothing but the series resistance between beta plus 1 R e and beta plus 1 capital R e. So, that is how we were writing we are writing here V i is equal to as the input voltage is I b into beta plus 1 into R e plus beta plus 1 I b into R e we are writing it in a different fashion that is we are keeping I b is equal to same and writing it beta plus 1 into R e plus R e where now we can denote Z b is equal to beta plus 1 R e plus R e that is the whole resistance from this point to this point beta plus 1 into small r e plus capital R e that is denoted by Z b. So, now we can find out the input impedance easily. So, what is this input impedance? This resistance R b parallel to Z b Z i is equal to R b parallel Z b. So, that is input impedance V i by I i. If we write down the whole expression of V i I b into Z b is this V i divided by I i. Again, if I proceed in that way which we used earlier I b is equal to I i into R b by R b plus Z b that is this current flowing through this resistances is I b find out that current that current is equal to I i into R b plus I i divided by R b I i into R b by R b plus this whole resistance that is current division. So, that is what is written here I i into R b by R b plus Z b into Z b by I i cancelling out these two. So, I will I am left with R b into Z b by R b plus Z b which is R b parallel Z b. So, we are getting even now if I look into the circuit from this terminal find out Z i this is intuitively we I can say R b parallel this whole resistance and that is what what we I have also found out proceeding from this initial expression for Z i that is giving the same result. So, this is input impedance what is output impedance if we look into the output circuit I look into the amplifier from the output side that is from the load we have to look from the load that is output impedance skipping this V i 0 making V i 0 means this I v is also 0 that is it is like a this part is open. So, if this part is open that means, I am having only one resistance R c at the output. So, output impedance is Z naught is R c. Now, voltage gain if we want to find out voltage gain A v following the expression V naught by V i doing all this replacements like V naught is what? V naught is 
minus i naught into r l like previous example this this is the direction from bottom to top of this current. So, minus i naught into r l is equal to v naught divided by b i, b i is again i v into this whole resistance z b. So, that is followed here i minus i naught into r l by i v into z b. Now, again what is i naught? That part of the current which flows through r l. So, the current which flows through r l is i naught. Now, the dependent current source beta i b that is what is flowing in this output circuit because you see the current part one is i b base current one is the collector current both are combined here to give the emitter current again as the current which is starting from a source it will it should end up at that same source. So, the current after this point will be again i b will be flowing this way and i c will be flowing this way. So, i c has again two components one is through r c another through r l I am interested in finding out the current through r l that is what is i naught. So, beta times of i b into r c by r c plus r l is i naught that is what is done here it is beta times of i b into r c by r c plus r l into r l since r naught is not there there are not three parts there are only two parts. So, that is what is the difference here it is made otherwise it will be more complex divided by i b into z b equal to minus of beta into i b i b cancel r c r l by r c plus r l again this is nothing but the parallel combination between this r c and r l in the denominator z b is there. So, what is the voltage gain a b that is equal to minus beta into r c parallel r l by z b again z b we can replace that is equal to beta plus 1 into small r e plus capital R e. So, this is the expression for voltage gain v naught by v i. Now, if we want to find out the voltage gain with respect to the source v naught by v s that is a v s if we want to find out what is v naught by v s as we know v naught by v s is equal to a v into z i by z i plus r s. So, z i we know we have found out z i simply replacing by this quantity for z i we can now get what is this a v s because a v this this a v what we have just now found out. So, voltage gain we have found out now if we want to find out the current gain i naught by i i i naught by i i is the current gain and i naught again we will be writing in the same way beta times of i b into r c by r c plus r l that is the part of the current which flows through r l and divided by i i again if I replace i b by that uh, part of the current which flows through the z b that is the i b out of the input current i i this portion goes through this z b so, i i into r b by r b plus z b is i b and the rest is this one same r c by r c plus r l divided by i i. So, then this is this to cancel. So, current gain becomes beta into r b into r c by r b plus z b into r c plus r l. So, this is the exact expression for current gain of course, r naught is ignored here. So, this circuit that is uh, the circuit having the emitter bias emitter resistance which is unbypassed there is no bypassing capacitor then we get this expressions or parameters which are involved in the amplifier. Now, another example which is very popular which we have earlier discussed and which is very very much used in all this practical amplifiers is the voltage divider bias configuration. So, if we now have this common emitter voltage divider bias configuration this is the circuit having R 1 and R 2 parallel at the terminal B and connected to VCC. I mean this resist these resistances R 1 and R 2 are now two separate resistances instead of one single resistance R B as was discussed in the earlier cases. Others are same others and the other parameters in this uh, circuit are same. So, in fact, if I analyze this circuit draw the e S equivalent circuit it will be similar only difference will be there that is we have to find out the Thevenin's resistance R B which is the parallel equivalent of R 1 and R 2 and that will be the factor which will be differing the, than the earlier circuits. So, if we draw the AC equivalent circuit for this voltage divider biasing scheme following the usual procedures we have R 1 and R 2 being parallel that AC equivalent circuit will be having R 1 and R 2 parallel because it is grounded since PCC is grounded now in AC equivalent circuit these two resistances which are both connected at base and connected to ground this also will be grounded because this will be grounded this is also grounded. So, these two are parallel. 
So, this parallel equivalent if I denote it by capital R capital B which is R 1 parallel R 2 all others are same and then the earlier, earlier discussion discussed circuits R C R naught is kept R L is there. So, now in this circuit we can easily find out what are the parameters involved like we can find out what is the input impedance. Input impedance if I look from this point find out what is the input impedance Z i that is this resistance parallel to this resistance R B parallel beta plus 1 R E and this R B of course, is R 1 parallel R 2 that is the only thing which is differing than the fixed bias circuit. And as this emitter is bypassed by this capacitor, so ultimately we are having the short circuited part like this. So, what is Z i? Z i is equal to R B parallel beta plus 1 R. Even if you follow by this usual procedure of finding out V i dividing it by I i which will give you Z i that will be giving you finally the same result. But I can intuitively very well see that this is nothing but the parallel combination between these two resistances at the input I can immediately write down this input impedance like this. And similarly if I find out the output impedance I look from this load into the amplifier in the output circuit look from here look from this load then it is parallel combination between R C and R naught that is the output impedance. So, these two can be immediately found out. Now, again if I want to find out in the traditional way of finding out the, all those expressions of voltage and current etcetera, then also you will be left uh, finally, we will be getting the same result. If I find out Z i is equal to B i by I i, again what is uh, B i? B i is I b into beta plus 1 R e divided by I i. Now, what is I b again? I replace in terms of I i that part of the current which flows through the resistance beta plus 1 R e that is I b. So, I i into R b by R b plus beta plus 1 R e that is this current I b into beta plus 1 R e divided by I i. So, now this to cancel. So, I am left with R b into beta plus 1 R e by R b plus beta plus 1 R e. This is nothing but a parallel combination between this two resistances R b and beta plus 1 R e. So, again R b is we know that this is R 1 parallel R 2. So, as per as expression wise if I look back and find uh, see the earlier circuit there is no difference because earlier also in fixed bias scheme we have found out that input impedance Z i was R b parallel beta plus 1 R e and this is also R b parallel beta plus 1 R e only difference is that now we are having R b as parallel combination between R 1 and R 2 not a single fixed resistance that is a difference others are same. And now output impedance as we have seen R C parallel R naught I need not again analyze in details that is very clear and voltage gain A V can be found out in a classical way of finding out from this voltage and finding out the gain. So, V naught is equal to I naught minus I naught into R L here this is V naught current is flowing in this direction. So, minus I naught into R L is V naught as V naught has been denoted upper point is positive with respect to the ground and again V i we know I b into beta plus 1 R e. So, that is replaced here and again finding out what is I naught from the output circuit the current source that is beta I b that is this current is divided into 3 parts. I am interested in finding out this current through R l that is equal to beta I, beta I b into R c parallel R naught by R c parallel R naught plus R l that is the current I naught. This R l is already there divided by I b into beta plus 1 R e and now I can cancel out this beta and this this I b and this I b and I am left with minus beta into R c parallel R naught into R l by R c parallel R naught plus R l. This is nothing but the parallel combination of R c parallel R naught and R l. So, finally, I am getting parallel combination between these three resistances R c small r naught and capital R l that is what is here minus I minus beta into R c parallel R naught parallel R l and in the denominator beta plus 1 into small r e. So, this is the exact expression that we obtain for this voltage divider biasing scheme and here we can conveniently further simplify by approximating that this uh, beta plus 1 and beta as these are almost equal we can cancel out these two and then write down this expression as minus R c parallel R naught parallel capital R l divided by R e. So, this is a further approximation than this again even further approximation I can do by conveniently ignoring R naught 
because in all practical cases R naught is very high. So, I can even further approximate by writing it down as minus R c into R l minus R c parallel R l by R e. So, this is after approximation one step further. So, finally, we can see that this voltage gain is actually high in common emitter amplifier because R is small its order is in the order of ohms. So, this is less as compared to the parallel combination of R c and R l because R c R l are generally it is in the order of kilo ohms. So, finally, in the numerator if I get a kilo ohm order of quantity and in the denominator is a ohm order of so 10 to the power 3 I mean it is almost like 100 times or I mean more than that you get an, an enhancement of the input signal that is actually uh, that what happens in common emitter amplifier. And now, if I again try to find out what is the overall voltage gain with respect to the source how much voltage gain I am getting. If I apply a source which is on in the order, order of 1 millivolt peak to peak suppose, I am applying a small signal V s it is it's peak to peak value is a 1 millivolt. Then how much amplified signal at the output I am getting that measure can be done that can be found out by finding the overall voltage gain A V s. Because a V s is nothing but V naught by V s final output voltage by input signal at the source that is actually giving you the measure of overall voltage gain. And by using the expression that uh, we have already discussed A V s is nothing but A V the voltage gain into Z i by Z i plus R s then I uh, we can find out what is this overall voltage gain. And if we do this we will be finding out that the voltage gain with this uh, for keeping uh, with the with respect to the source if this voltage gain overall voltage gain a bit less than the voltage gain A V. Because if you look into the denominator Z i plus R s, R s is a series resistance it is a, it is a value small value it may be, but it is still has the denominator value being higher than the numerator in this case. So, it will be a fraction. So, a V multiplied by a fraction means ultimately it will be a reduced value than A V. So, overall voltage gain if we consider having a series resistance in the source it will be lesser than A V s is generally lesser than A V. So, overall voltage gain is lesser than the voltage gain which would have been possible had there been no series resistance with the source. And similarly current gain we can find out A i. So, A i current gain I naught by I i and I naught is the current which flows through the load resistance R l. So, the load resistance R l is having that current I naught which is a part of the current beta times I b and that current is beta times I b into R c parallel R naught divided by R c parallel R naught plus R l. So, that is replaced here R c parallel R naught by R c parallel R naught plus R l. So, that is the part of this current beta times I b which flows through R l which is I naught divided by I i. Now, again we can express this I b as I i into R b by R b plus beta plus 1 R e because that is the part of the current which is flowing through this beta plus 1 R e that is the base current. So, out of the input current I i a part is flowing to this uh, beta plus 1 R e that is the base current that is why what we are finding or replacing it with. So, that is nothing but I i into R b by R b plus beta plus 1 R e. So, that is here we are replacing instead of I b I am writing it I i into R b by R b plus beta plus 1 R e others are same this this is same as it is. Then I can now cancel out writing it in that order has a purpose of cancelling out those two I i. So, now we are having current gain expression as beta into R b by R b plus beta plus 1 R e into R c parallel R naught by R c parallel R naught plus R l. This is the exact expression of current gain in voltage divider biasing scheme. There is no phase difference in the current gain that means there is no phase shift between the input current and output current. And in the voltage gain there is a phase reversal of 180 degree that is the input signal is out of phase by 180 degree with the output signal. And the the current gain if we look into the current gain I can further simplify it by ignoring R naught. If I ignore R naught that will be R c by R c plus R l and beta is generally very high in common emitter. It is 100 even more than 100 it, it can be up to 500 say. So, even if it is say in hundreds P 
beta time beta is in hundreds, we will be getting the voltage gain very much higher and that is the basically that is the reason why common emitter amplifiers are used for voltage amplification. You get a high voltage gain, you get a high voltage gain and the high voltage gain actually can be seen to be here because small r e is in the denominator that is very small as compared to the numerator. So, it is always greater than 1 in the order of hundreds also you get voltage gain in common emitter amplifier. So, for a voltage amplification purpose you use common emitter amplifier. Of course, there is a phase reversal of 180 degree and that has to be remembered. So, now in this uh, discussion we have now today uh, covered the different biasing schemes and if we understand the way to proceed in the AC equivalent circuit to find out all those parameters which are involved in the amplifier like voltage gain, current gain and input impedance, output impedance. These are the major parameters and a related parameter may be power gain that you can find out if I am multiply voltage gain and current gain we will be getting the power gain expression also, but that, that is just a, a secondary gain I mean we, I, I get from voltage and current gain. So, once I know voltage and current gain you can find out the power gain. So, the major parameters we have found out that is we have found out the input impedance and output impedance, we have found out voltage gain and volt current gain for different biasing schemes. Out of all these biasing schemes, the voltage divider biasing scheme which we have just now discussed is very popular because it generally has the capacity to stabilize the operating point. So, actually all the, although we have discussed to that the amplifier from the perspective of the AC equivalent circuit, but prior to it we have already discussed the biasing scheme. So, once we this once we have set upon a good biasing scheme stabilizing the Q point or the operating point which we which should not shift afterwards even because of change of beta because of change of the transistor or because of temperature change there should not be significant change in the or shifting of the operating point. After ensuring the biasing only we proceed to find out the amplification of the amplifier that we are considering. So, as voltage divider biasing scheme is very very popular because it guarantees the stability of the operating point. So, that is why it is very much used in practice. So, with the uh, voltage divider biasing scheme along with those capacitances which are coupling capacitances as bypass capacitance, we have found out all these parameters which are involved in the amplifier. So, we can find out for any biasing scheme if we proceed in a similar way from the starting principle that is in order to find out the voltage gain we must start out we must proceed from the starting point which is nothing but the ratio between the output voltage and input voltage. So, then what is output voltage what is input voltage those expressions we have to find out keeping in mind the AC equivalent circuit or referring to the AC equivalent circuit along with the transistor model being incorporated into it. So, we can find out any parameter for any biasing scheme amplifier proceeding in the same manner which we discussed today and even if some of the resistances may be absent. For example, if we have the uh, no resistance in the emitter that is emitter is having say no resistance in this circuit if there is no resistance in this emitter or simply it is connected to ground then also we can find out there is no difficulty in finding out the parameters for any circuit with even the resistances being some of the resistance being not there instead of two there is only one single resistance as we discussed in the first case just by proceeding from the first principle. So, always we have to proceed for with the first principle that means if we want to find out the input impedance it will be V i by I i. But one thing to be noted here is that we will be considering the source and the load outside the purview of this two terminal network. That means input side will be having the source resistance 
input terminals will be having the source resistance and uh, source outside and the output terminal will be having the load resistance outside. So, this point has to be remembered and the whole uh, network will be in between these two points or two pair of terminals input and output 1 1 dash and 2 2 dash if we name it. So, now in that way we can proceed and find out the parameters which are required or which are important for this uh, amplifier and we can find out for any of the configurations. So, basically if we are asked to find out what is the voltage gain of this particular amplifier, then by plugging in all the values we can find out the gain. So, we will be also considering next the numerical example. If I want to find out numerically the value of any of the parameters for any of the configuration, we can do that. So, today's discussion actually leads us to going a step further for exactly finding out the amplifier parameters, but still we have to keep in mind that we are still considering the small signal analysis. That is our signal is small enough to still make the transistor operate in active region only. If the transistor should not be overdriven into either saturation or transistor being overdriven into cutoff, these two, these two conditions should never arise then only this whole discussion is valid. That is whatever small signal analysis we are doing, we are, sm we are doing the small signal analysis and applying it to the transistor amplifier and in view of this small signal being applied, we are still in the active region or the transistor is in operating in the active region. That is why we can write down that IC is equal to beta times IV. So, if it is saturation, we are, we are never able to analyze it in the way that we are analyzing. So, this point has to be kept in mind that we are dealing with a small signal analysis and we are trying to find out all those parameters involved in the amplifier, taking example different biasing schemes and finding out all this. So, today we have discussed about common emitter transistor amplifier PZT, common emitter configuration with different biasing schemes. Also, there are common base and common collector amplifiers and these common base and common emitter amplifiers are basically used for some typical special applications like a voltage buff buffer or current buffer etcetera it will be used. So, uh, we will be discussing that, but then today we have discussed about the most frequently or commonly used amplifier for voltage amplification suppose and that in that case generally the common emitter amplifier is used. So, we have discussed extensively about common emitter amplifier in different configuration of biasing, but we will also discuss about common base and common collector amplifiers next. Mm -hmm.